Hey you guys, welcome to Warrior Training Systems. It is Tuesday. We are gonna get you rolling, get you warmed up, take you through some outstanding exercises today, and hopefully have a little bit of fun. So all of our uh, all of our days, you guys have ever been here before, uh, we pretty much start out with three to five minutes of just a simple monostructural movement for your warm up. This could be jogging, assault biking, uh, you could mix in like planking, box step ups, single unders, uh, basically, we just want gentle movement on the body for about three to five minutes so we can literally uh, increase your body temperature and increase blood flow. We're gonna follow that up with three to five minutes of foam rolling. Target areas to hit on the foam rolling would be low back through the erectors. You could also work up through the upper back. If you're up in the upper back and wanna see you hug yourself, roll through. I like to also hit my quads, uh, outside and to the inside, roll through from the knee all the way to the hip, all the way back down. And then we're also gonna work through the glutes and your hamstrings. Uh, if you have time also, I really like to go on top of my calves. So I put my foot on top of my other foot and then the bottom leg is getting rolled on the calf. That's an awesome way to get going. So let's get moving. Now that we're warmed up, we're gonna move into another super set similar to yesterday. So you see an A1 and an A2. The A's mean we're gonna work on these together. One and two means we're gonna bounce back and forth between the two movements. Today's supersets are gonna be of sumo deadlift and penlay row. Both of these movements are generally completed with a barbell, so you can jump on YouTube really quickly or in our video file. There's plenty of demonstrations of what a sumo deadlift looks like and what a penlay row looks like. I'm gonna talk about them both today, but I'm gonna demonstrate with a dumbbell to cater a little bit more to people who can't make it into the gym. So if you're at home, you can see what it might look like for you. In the sumo deadlift, we wanna make sure that our feet are wider than our shoulders. So it's gonna be significantly wider than a normal deadlift, which is closer to your hips. If you have one dumbbell, you have a couple options. You can hold it in this position, or to help with uh, depth, you can hold it from the top. I think this is probably a little safer for the majority of us. Once your feet are nice and wide, outside of your shoulders, you're gonna let your feet gaze out a little bit. So if you're looking down at your feet, you wanna let them go to like 11 and one. The actual width of your feet will be determined based on your hip mobility. So some people might be able to be way out here. Some of us might be a little more narrow, but still outside the shoulders. We're gonna complete four reps for five sets. So on the sumo deadlift, we're gonna squat down. You're gonna be much more vertical than a traditional deadlift. Pull through the weight, chest stays up, so you can read the logo on my shirt. And we're gonna push the ground away from us as we squeeze our knees and squeeze our butt on the way up. We're gonna complete four reps here. After those four reps of sumo deadlifts, we're gonna move into a penlay row. A penlay row, again, generally completed with a barbell, but I'm gonna demonstrate with a dumbbell since that's more likely to be similar to what you may have at home or outside of the gym. Here, we're gonna do five reps, and let's take a look at the movement. For the penlay row, we're gonna first stand all the way up. Feet are gonna be under the hips. From here, we're gonna push our hips back, stretching the hamstrings to a 45 degree angle, and we're gonna pull our elbows up towards the ceiling, rowing the weight into the thickest part of your abdominals. And we're gonna be here for five reps. I do think it's important that when to start this movement, once you lift your weight, you don't just go right to here. I think it helps a lot to come all the way up, train track back down, and then lift. Also notice when you're in this lift, the bar or the weight should still be over your midfoot, not hanging out afar or be behind your midfoot. We're gonna work back and forth between the sumo deadlift and the penlay row for five sets. Following A1 and A2, we're gonna get into today's Metcon or conditioning piece. We're gonna work through four rounds today of a 200 meter run, 10 burpees over a bar, 10 ground to overhead, rest two minutes. We wanna pace all these sets so that they're challenging, but they're repeatable. Note that you are being given rest in between sets, so we should be able to work pretty hard, recover in the rest. There's no rest during the work, so we need to modify as needed. The timing of this workout probably is gonna look something for an elite athlete like 45 seconds for the run, 30 seconds for 10 burpees, 30 seconds for 10 ground overhead. So we're right in the ballpark of two minutes per round, which is why you're being provided with two minutes of rest. If one of those three movements is gonna be far off of that number for you, we're gonna to wanna to modify. So if you can't run a 200 in a minute or less, we wanna shorten that distance. If you can't complete 10 bar facing burpees in 30 seconds or roughly 30 seconds for sure under a minute, we wanna reduce those reps. And the same with the ground to overhead. 
If you're using a barbell, you could do a power clean and push jerk or push press. You could also do a clean and jerk of any kind. You could even do a power snatch if you would like. If you're using a dumbbell, I'm gonna also show you a couple of these different options that you can use. When you return from the 200 meter run, we can come down. Option one would be 10 alternating power snatches. So we'll come all the way up and we'll do 10 reps total. Choose a weight that's gonna challenge you, but allow you to catch in the extended position and not have to flip over and catch in an ugly push out, okay? We could also do clean and jerks, even with a goblet position. So if we go from the ground to the overhead position as more of a clean and jerk. If you have a kettlebell or if you'd like, you can also do kettlebells and swings or dumbbell swings as an option as well. If you completed yesterday's workout with us, you probably want to forgo kettlebell swings as we already did those and you'd be more likely to do the snatch or the clean and jerk. If all you have is a dumbbell or a kettlebell, we'll do the burpees over that object. If the burpees are really uh, throwing you a curveball and you're unable to complete them in the estimated time of around 30 seconds, we could just do burpees with no jumping over the object or we could reduce the reps. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you have a great workout. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay human.